Life is too short to drive a boring car. And love it or hate it, it's not boring. You already know what this is. And likely carved one for the Pinewood Derby when you were 12. The world changes. But you don't have to let it change you. The original plan for today was to chauffeur our guests in an old Rolls Royce. Unfortunately, it had an electrical failure the day before the shoot, so we decided, why not get something even less reliable? Hello. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you? Good. You're going back to the future? <laughs> Just for you. Only the best. I arrived in a 400 horsepower electric pencil sharpener. <laughs> Let's, Let's do it. Shall we? <laughs> I saw a hat the other day uh, that said, there's a little, little icon of a cyber truck, and it said, it's not a truck, it's a cry for help. Oh my gosh. I was like, That's man, amazing. I wish I had time to order That's that. That's amazing. And it's, it's funny because, you know, Diggs, who left Buffalo, who nobody likes anymore, he has a cyber truck. So, it's perfect. Well, <laughs> it's like I tell my son, if you can't say something nice, say something clever but devastating. <laughs> so who's lived in Buffalo the longest? Probably the same. We were both yeah. born and raised. Born and raised here. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. Both went away to school and both came back. And what was the what was the thing that made you say I have to go back to Buffalo? <sighs> well, and so after school I moved away for a little bit, and I was coaching college football at that point, and I realized so I gave them a two year job commitment, and realized after six months this is not for me. So I came back home, and then I got a job interview at a financial firm and. Here I am, <laughs> like 12 years later. Um, so it was just kind of luck, I guess. It's so interesting to me that I, I hear over and over again people who, it's not like they went to college going finance, oh, no. but they have an internship, an opportunity, and they, they get an experience of the industry and they're like, I actually love this. Yeah. I think my story is very similar too. Like I, it was an internship opportunity out of college, basically, and I had no idea what I was going into for the interview. <laughs> I was picturing some like 80-year-old, you know, man selling stocks or something like that that would be doing my interview, and it was not like that at all. I remember them just saying like, you know, you you can help people, and the more people you help, the more you can do good for yourself. And I thought that was just pretty cool. So. So um, we're so crazy about chicken wings here. Uh, Alessia has a book called Duffy the Wing, and it's yes. and Duffy's friend Blue, Blue Cheese. Oh. Um, and you know, I, it doesn't end the way it means. Like I was thinking, how is this gonna end? You're gonna eat the wing, and that was right. Uh, Before you eat Duffy, <laughs> it's uh, it's a cute story of a wing and its best friend Blue. <laughs> so Christopher, have you ever had a wing with blue cheese? Yes, I'm okay. a I'm a big blue cheese fan. Okay, so yeah. good. Most places here right make in. their own blue cheese. Oh, even better. It's yeah. a game changer. Yeah. <laughs> even better. So not only are you going to be critiquing the wing, but also but also the blue cheese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The task was to determine who had the best wing in Buffalo. To settle the score, we chose neutral ground. 
So of all the conversations we've ever had, I've never heard how you became business partners. I don't know that story of how this began. So we each ran um, kind of like our separate practice for years, right? Um, in the same office though, right? So we knew each other, but, but definitely, you know, kind of different practices and we did that for quite some time. And then, you know, I got married and was looking to start a family and Jeff had met someone and was getting married, kind of the same idea. And Jeff came to me and was just kind of like, hey, like what's, how are we gonna like keep growing <laughs> but doing this on our own? Um, and he brought up the idea, his, his father um, working in uh, the medical field for years was like, we just need like coverage. <laughs> and yeah, it's January of 2019 um, was basically when we tied a bow on it and said, let's do it. You know, yeah. let's combine our practices. Let's grow this together. Um, and we both had kind of the same philosophy on how we work with clients and yeah, it's been. And I think the really the crux of it was that we trust each other. And you know, one thing that Elizabeth mentioned to you earlier, the same thing that I would say to my parents is if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, work with Elizabeth because I trust her and I know that you're, you know, you're gonna be taken care of in the same way that I would take care of you. When at the end of the day, it's the same process, right? Yeah. So like Jeff and I have designed over the years of working together, a very you know similar process of like nuts to bolts this is how we work with clients this is you know what our philosophy is on how to set up a plan to make sure that people can be secure through retirement so the process is the same it's just a matter of who do you want the delivery from yeah. and we've had people that like if they've met me or elizabeth first and they want to switch they're like <laughs> Is it okay? I'm like, it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. It's all Nova Wealth, but they're very like, oh my gosh, am I gonna offend you? I'm like, no, yeah. not, not in the least. That's very cool. What surprised you the most about being an advisor? It's a very emotional business in the sense of, you know, people are really entrusting. <laughs> their entire lives to you. I mean, most of the people that we sit down with, you know, I say all the time, like there was probably a time in your life where you never thought you'd have half a million, million dollars, whatever it is that there's their net worth, you know, when you were raising kids and paying a mortgage and, you know, underwater, but then people like surface and they're like, oh shoot, you know, I'm 60 something years old. I've got X, what do I do with it? And how do, is it enough? How do I make sure that I'm not gonna run out of money? And most people don't wanna to have to figure that out themselves. And I'll steal something that Elizabeth always says when you know she's talking to somebody that's new is like, we've all got the same stuff. <laughs> you know, it's you know, mutual fund A or mutual fund B or you know, everybody has access to close to the same stuff. And it's, do you want me to talk to you for 30 years about this? Because if you don't like me, I can have the best stuff, but like if every time I call you, you're like, oh my God. God. This guy, like yeah. this I guy don't again. I want to talk to you. So I mean, that's a hu just a huge part of it. Like you said, the human element is mm -hmm. is huge, not only for us but for them. Elizabeth always will say, like, it's the first appointment is kind of like speed dating. Like, mm -hmm. do you like us? Do we like you? Do you want to move to the next level? Like, you know, what do we do here? One of the things I, I I love to dig in with people is asking them, how has being an advisor changed you? I think. Number one, for me, it's made me more empathetic because I see people firsthand, them going through situations that I'm not going through, but it's someone that I care about. It's not just like I see it on TV and it's like whatever. I think part of that also comes with age, but I think that being close to people like that, that they're going through something and they're, again, they're trusting you and telling you something that they're not maybe telling their best friend or you know somebody that, that I think that that really gives me a great sense of responsibility with people that I wanna do what's best for them because they're trusting me so much. I think that, that is, uh, that's changed me quite a bit. That's cool. Yeah, I'd say it's okay to be 100% authentically you. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I started in this business at technically 20 years old, <laughs> um, was when I was hired for the internship, 21 when I graduated college, and it's tough to be authentically you in your 20s, <laughs> right? I don't even know if I knew who yeah, I was, you don't right? know who you are. You don't, yeah. and I grew up in this business as I was figuring that out, and there was a turning point in my career 
when you know I had enough confidence, I had enough kind of gears under my belt, where finally I just started doing things my way, talking to people like how I talk to people, right? For better or worse, <laughs> I'm a blunt person. Um, but what I found is that attracted a lot more clients, right? A lot more success when you finally are just 100% authentically you. And that was a learning curve for me, for sure, when I started in the business. But um, I would say was my biggest takeaway and something that you know maybe I got to quicker that I wouldn't have otherwise because of the business that we're in. It was at this point our producer Fallon arrived with the goods. Okay, so I've been hearing about this for a while. Walk me through what we have here. Duffs for the Duff man. Real buffalo wings. And barbell for the barbell. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Jeff, why are these the best? <laughs> well, first of all, these are just hot. The flavor is hot. The flavor is hot. <laughs> just hot. Yeah. There's, okay. uh, you know, I, I think that to me, Duff's is the classic buffalo. When you're in Buffalo and you think of a buffalo wing, uh -huh. if you don't think about Duff's, you think of a wing that is like a Duff's wing. It's okay. a little bit more roll up your sleeves. It's like, you know, you're going to get dirty when you eat this. <laughs> this isn't like you don't go to Duff's on a first date. <laughs> I'm glad you're not overselling it, and I'm really excited to eat them on camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and so as you can see, my yeah. selection is maybe we don't need to roll up our sleeves. Okay, <laughs> they're, they're cute. Yeah, they're so cute. I barbell, as I said, dry rub. I'm a dry rub Cajun person, so my favorite thing okay. to get there. Um, definitely different than the hot. So. Yeah. Well, uh, the guy from Nebraska in California can definitely be. A judge? I don't even know. And uh, the most important part the about the wings <laughs> is it goes with blue cheese, yeah. not with anything else. And and you both places have their own blue cheese. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Many places around here will just make their own blue cheese. It's not out of the craft okay. blue cheese okay. container. So you can judge the wing, but you also should be judging the blue cheese. Can you tell me about a time where a client came to you with maybe a difficult challenge, a unique life situation, and you were able to engineer a specific, really great experience that was unique to them? Yeah, so our, our niche is retirement income distribution planning, which is like a fancy way of like, I'm retiring, how do I take money from everything that I have, right? And a big part of that is Social Security, where does that fit in the plan? And yeah, I mean, I was, I've got a couple of stories of these really, but um, I was meeting with uh, a woman. She was a pre-existing client. She was getting close to retirement age and she was of full retirement and she was previously married. So I told her, we need to have you go to social security office and figure out what you were entitled to from your spouse's benefit um, when you were married. So she went there, um, we had a follow-up meeting you know, the next week and she said, oh, they said I wasn't entitled to anything. I'm like, well, that's not true. <laughs> because you're entitled to you know, a certain amount. There was what's called a restricted application that used to exist that you could do. Um, so we ended up going back together. <laughs> and the woman gave her the same answer. And I, you know, that's when you start to like, question, I'm like, am I missing something? And I'm like, no. Pulled up on the Social Security website. I'm like, no, she was born, born for this date. Like, she's entitled to theirs and then can actually delay her own benefit. And what this equated to her is she was actually able to retire <laughs> Um, where she wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So she thought she had to work another three or four years based upon trying to get her benefit up as much as possible, but because she was able to take her spouse's and then hers later, it, it literally gave her three to four more years of freedom, <laughs> right, where she could retire comfortably. Um, and if she didn't have an advocate for that, like she would never have known. Like who would never have, she would have taken that, you know, answer at face value. So I'll give you a, a small example. I've got these clients that the the wife huge saver the husband is not a spender but like the wife is like i need to s like save every dollar that we have so when we do retirement income planning it's like okay this is your income that you're going to get monthly spend it all like that's what the plan is for and she is trying to save a portion of that for what i'm not really sure and the the husband is like no we're supposed to so she's getting mad at him for buying stuff on amazon but he's like 
we, we, this is the plan. The money we saved is we've already saved. So it's it's funny when Elizabeth said savers and spenders because some of the spenders that are savers that are just like, I'm gonna save the income I already saved for retirement and like save it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it, yeah, but again, like you are who you are, yeah. and you know that's the biggest part of our business is not trying to fight people on that. Well, I cannot imagine getting a more personal and distinctive introduction to Buffalo than I have gotten from the two of you, like learning that both the blue cheese and wings are best from Barbell. <gasps> yes. See, th th this is exactly why we don't take our opinions on wings from people that aren't from Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher, right, I'm gonna call the, that a win. That's the, yeah, and that's the out to this episode. Go back to California. Go Bills. <laughs> So I should have wore the shirt I have that says, if you don't like Buffalo, don't come. <laughs> <laughs>